You've certainly heard about the solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse that is coming to the U.S. But how are you going to photograph it? Well, I've got some tips in this episode of Tim Gray TV. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that there is a total solar eclipse coming to the United States. But do you know how you're going to see it and photograph it? Well, I've got some tips for you. First and foremost, when is this happening? Well, on Monday, August 21st, 2017, there will be a total solar eclipse that passes across the continental United States. And you can see this total solar eclipse in a variety of places, essentially along the path. What's happening is that the moon is passing between the sun and the earth, casting a shadow down onto the earth. And if you're in just the right spot, that shadow can pass over you. The moon will completely block out the sun, day turns to night, and you could get some very interesting photographs. In other locations, not quite along the exact path of that eclipse, you'll be able to get a partial eclipse. So first, let's take a look at exactly where this eclipse is occurring. I have a map here that shows the path of the total solar eclipse. You can see that things get started out over the Pacific Ocean and then the path of the eclipse initially enters the United States on the coast of Oregon and then passes through the Midwest and finishes down in the Carolinas. So you can see the exit path and then continuing on into the Atlantic Ocean. So that is the path that determines where you want to be, or at least the path along which you'll want to find a location. And we can see also the times. Now, if I add points on this map, I'll zoom in a little bit so that we can get a closer view. And we can add additional points onto the map here just by clicking. This is an interactive map provided by NASA, by the way. And you'll see that the eclipse starts at what looks like 4 p.m. on the west coast. However, that is universal time or coordinated universal time, Greenwich Mean Time. And so the actual time will be around about 9 a.m. on the west coast Pacific time that things get started with the total eclipse happening a little after 10 a.m. The whole event lasts a few hours coast to coast. So everything will be finished by a little before 3 p.m on the East Coast Eastern time, the eclipse itself, that total eclipse experience is just a couple minutes long. And so you want to be prepared so that you're able to capture some great photos and perhaps even video clips. So the first thing is to understand the date and time, August 21st, 2017. And the time, of course, depends on where you choose to be along this path. But this is the path you're going to want to look at. If you are fortunate enough to live on this path, then you just go outside perhaps and enjoy that total solar eclipse. Otherwise, some travel might be involved. So for example, I'm in New York City. If I want to try to go see that eclipse, I've got some traveling to do, maybe going into Kentucky or Missouri and looking along this path, zooming in, finding a location, maybe finding a hotel. I can tell you that along the path of this eclipse, hotel prices have already gone up significantly. So be prepared for that. But beyond the location, you'll also want to think about the weather because that weather will determine whether or not you can even see the sun. And so right now, as I'm preparing this route, as I'm preparing to go photograph the eclipse, the weather, of course, it's too far in advance. I can't plan for the weather, so I need something of a backup plan. I need to know what options exist for me. Perhaps choosing a hotel, a location that's not exactly on the path, but is reasonably close to that path so that I can drive in one direction or the other to get to a location where I'll be able to have an unobscured sky, clear skies, I hope. And as that time approaches, I'll want to take a look at a couple of things. Several days in advance, you can start to take a look at the overall weather conditions. And so here, for example, courtesy of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, I have an animation. I can click start here and see an animation. Again, this is well in advance of the eclipse itself, so not yet useful, but a few days ahead of time, this will start to become useful. In particular, what I would be looking at here is the path of any high pressure systems. 
generally speaking, high pressure systems are associated with relatively good weather, relatively clear skies. Not always, of course, but as a general rule. And so if you see a nice, large, high pressure system that's holding steady or maybe moving across the map, those are the areas that I would key in on as possible destinations for your eclipse photography. And then as we get closer and closer, the day before, even the day of, then I would be looking at satellite imagery. So here, courtesy of the National Weather Service, you can see some maps. If we go to the visible light option, we can animate for the last six hours, for example, you'll notice there's this sweep of darkness. Well, that's because visible satellite imagery doesn't work very good at night. And so when it is nighttime on Earth, the scene, of course, would be dark. And what you're seeing there is essentially sunrise going across the United States. And you can see the visible clouds. The infrared view will generally give you a little bit better result overall, a little more detail, but also this works well at night. So in the early morning hours before the sun has come up, you can still get a sense of where that moisture is, where those clouds are going to be. And again, looking for an area that has a nice, large, clear, unobstructed view, ideally. So in this case, we can see right at the center of our map, we have a great view. So Kansas, right at the moment here on this map, looks to have very clear skies. So if that falls on part of the route that I'm able to get to, that would work out very nicely. One of the maps that I find most useful, though, is the water vapor map because that shows us the actual water vapor. Here again, I can set that map in motion and see where that moisture is and where it's moving toward or away from. Again, giving me a sense, helping to tip things in my favor to help make sure that I'll have the best chances possible of viewing and photographing that eclipse. And once I'm getting a much better sense, of course, then I'll want to take a look more specifically at the map. So I found an area that has some good weather. With this interactive map, I can click to add additional points so that I can see when the partial eclipse will begin, when the total eclipse begins, the maximum, the high point of that total eclipse, and then the end of the total eclipse and the end of the partial eclipse. Keep in mind, of course, these are universal time values. So this is not actually a little bit after 4 p.m. local time into oh, about 7.30 is the final ending time. That's not local time. That's essentially Greenwich Mean Time or universal time. And so pay careful attention to those times so that you are in the right location at the right time, ideally a bit early. Now, of course, once you've figured out where you're going to be to photograph the eclipse, you need to think about your equipment. Naturally, you'll have a camera. And in fact, I recommend having more than one camera, maybe even bringing along an iPhone, setting it up on a tripod, capturing video, or maybe a time lapse or what have you, getting various different options. When it comes to your lens, there are a couple of approaches, and you might want to take both of those approaches. One would be to use a long lens so that you're isolating just the sun and the moon, of course, for that eclipse. The other option would be to use a wide-angle lens and get the overall scene. Of course, the sun then will appear quite small in the frame, relatively speaking, but you'll have a little bit of the context. So you might use that as a secondary shot, for example, or for a sequence of images, which can be very interesting, assembled into a composite later. As a very general rule, I would aim toward a focal length of around about a thousand millimeters effective focal length based on a 35 millimeter camera, digital SLR full frame. And so, for example, with a cropped sensor, you could use a little bit shorter focal length, maybe 500 or 600 millimeters, if you're interested in isolating the sun. Essentially, what this boils down to is probably, for most photographers, using the longest lens that is available. And then, in terms of exposure, Generally speaking, if you were not using any filters, more on that in just a moment, then for the total eclipse itself, when we have a full total eclipse, essentially day is turned to night, but we're still seeing the glow of the sun, the aura of the sun around the moon, then at ISO 100 and F8, you could figure on a shutter speed of somewhere around a 250th of a second. That might vary if you're using any filters, but once we've gone into that total eclipse, you don't need a filter. If you're photographing before that, in other words, the full sun or the partial eclipse, probably at that same 100 ISO and F8 aperture, probably a shutter speed, depending on atmospheric conditions, of somewhere around a thousandth of a second up to about a four thousandth of a second. 
but that will vary based on filter use and I strongly recommend in the case of a total solar eclipse the partial leading up to or the sun itself that you use a filter designed specifically for that purpose and so you'll want to use a solar filter this goes on to the front of the lens of course and it blocks the vast majority of the light there are a couple of reasons why this is important a few reasons actually one is that you want to enjoy the experience and you want to be able to see what you're photographing so you'll be looking through your viewfinder perhaps or maybe using the live view display but especially in the context of the viewfinder you want to be able to look at the sun and this makes sure that it is safe for you to do so that solar filter enables you to look right through the viewfinder through the lens through the filter so that you can see the sun very easily without damaging your eyes more on that eye damage concern in a moment as well but then with that filter attached we're able to view through that viewfinder safely we're also minimizing the risk of damaging the image sensor because we're not just taking a quick photo of the sun we're probably tracking that sun for an extended period of time the filter that you get will block a considerable amount of light the specific amount depends many filters might be five to ten stops of light for example so that will slow down your shutter speed you might need to increase your iso a little bit you'll probably want to make use of a tripod to help ensure that you've got a very stable platform so all things considered this is a photo that includes the sun that also means that you can get out there now before long before hopefully the total solar eclipse and practice using all of the equipment practice with your camera settings practice capturing images of the sun because for the partial eclipse portion of this event those same rules will apply it's as though you're just including the sun in the frame things get more interesting of course when we get to the total eclipse all along the way you'll want to make sure to have spare batteries for example because you're probably going to have that camera out a lot testing it a lot ahead of time using the live view display significantly so you want to make sure you're prepared on that front i also recommend bracketing your exposures just to play it safe i would use the maximum amount of bracketing available in many cases you might have five seven or even nine captures available as part of that automatic exposure bracketing play it safe you're probably not going to see another total solar eclipse for at least a few years depending on where your travels might take you and so you want to make sure that you've got some flexibility there in case anything goes wrong with your exposure and speaking of exposure you'll want to be very careful with your eyes ensuring that you're protecting your vision i talked about that solar filter that will help protect your camera that will help ensure that you can look through the viewfinder safely but just for viewing the eclipse itself you'll want to have some glasses that will block essentially all visible light i can now see absolutely nothing but that makes it safe for me to look at the sun and i do recommend bringing along a few pairs of those glasses so that number one in case they get damaged you've got a backup pair you can also share those with friends or others that you meet along the way i think one of the most important things to keep in mind in all of this is that it is an experience first and foremost this is a very interesting unique special event you're going to want to photograph it certainly you're a photographer you want to photograph special events special circumstances but don't forget to enjoy the experience along the way plan ahead figure out where you need to be to get the best chances in terms of the weather be sure that you're being safe with those glasses that enable you to look at the sun without harming your eyes keeping in mind that you won't feel any pain there is no pain receptors that are going to tell you that you're damaging your eyes but you could be causing permanent vision damage or loss so don't look at the sun without using glasses or filters that are specifically designed for that purpose most importantly as i've said enjoy the experience have fun and see if you can get some great photos of this total total solar eclipse and if you do please share them with me my calendar is making it look like i might not be able to venture out there we'll see how that plays out but i'd certainly love to see what sorts of photos you're able to come up with so be sure to share those online with the whole world and with me and have a lot of fun capturing this very special event the total solar eclipse <laughs>